Imagine, war has driven you out of your home. You find yourself in a camp with thousands of others. It rains. Among your possessions, a plastic cover to keep your hut dry, some pots and pans to cook a simple meal. Then all of a sudden shooting breaks out. Panic. You're forced to flee again for a second time. When you come back the next day, the few things you still owned have been looted by the very soldiers that were supposed to protect you. Welcome to the reality of the Mugunga One camp in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo, the DRC. This camp is not only a refuge for internally displaced persons, it also is a convenient source of essential goods for unpaid and underpaid Congolese soldiers. There's several reasons. First of all, they don't have, um, uh, their salaries are very, very low. Um, so oftentimes they don't have the necessary resources to, uh, uh, for proper shelter and for basic necessities for themselves. Um, so that causes a lot of indiscipline and a lot of looting on their part also. If the army soldiers are paid properly, they have less reason to loot. I believe um, it's one of the key things you can do to improve the situation here. Looting is common practice in this part of Central Africa. Camps like Magungu 1 are in the middle of a war zone. The conflict here has displaced some 425,000 people. It is the worst crisis since Congo ended its civil war in 2003. The conflict here in the Kivu provinces is a complicated one. A handful of armed groups all fight each other. Hutus from neighboring Rwanda, the FDLR, the Mai Mai militia, the well-organized rebels under dissident general Leroy Nkunda, and the disorganized and chaotic National Congolese Army. On the ground also, the biggest UN peacekeeping force in the world. It's called Monuk and includes mostly soldiers from India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. UN convoys pass Mugungu on a regular basis just as the Indian Air Force helicopters that offer UN support to the Congolese army. Among the victims of this conflict, the children, like 13-year-old Sore, who is looking for his family. When asked about his plans for the future, Sore says his main concern is to find something to eat. UNICEF says half of all people displaced in Kivu are children. That means the war here includes more than 200,000 children among its victims. Many children have been separated from their families during flights, so during the displacement. So with our various partners, we have centers to where children can come and report and also parents can come and report separated children. And we've reunified just in this area to date, over 200 children uh, have been reunified with their families. The camps in North and South Kivu are managed by the UN High Commission for Refugees. They make sure the people get at least one meal a day. UNICEF provides assistance specifically for children, helping them find their parents or other relatives, providing vaccinations or, where possible, a basic form of schooling. The Mugungu camp also has been blessed with trainers from War Child. This organization trains adults to play and sing with children. As soon as the rain disappears, the central meeting ground floods with smiles. Dat je, dat je dat je huis moet noemen. Dit is zeg maar de keuken. 
Moet je, je toch gewoon een, een haardvuurtje. Dat je dan dat dan daar op. midden in die hut hebben. En daarachter dat, dat hoopje stro. Met een lapje, dat is de slaapkamer. The straw huts with banana leaves on the lava rock are supposed to be a safe haven. But even here, the children and the parents that fleed from the fighting are not completely safe. There's a Congolese army base on the other side of the hill. Just a few days earlier, the base was attacked with rocket-propelled grenades by Nukunda's rebels. Eyewitnesses say that shots were also fired at the camp, and thousands fled to seek safety for the night in the city of Goma, about six kilometers down the road. Uncertainty and fear, the prospect of hunger and continued poverty, increasing ethnic tensions. That is what the people in Magungu have to live with, just as those in dozens of camps like this one. One thing that is certain here in Congo is that this crisis will go on as long as the rest of the world will stand by and watch. Raymond Franken at the Mugungu One Camp in North Kivu. Mwite nguye Tuingia sasa katika lugha ya Kiswahili